Greetings and thank you for taking a look at this video. This video will review opening up the PDFs that you have requested for your drainage maps. Uh, you may be getting the PDFs in the form of a email that may look something like this, or you may be getting the PDFs on your SD drain on some stuff that's already loaded up there where you would be looking at the in the Windows File Folder Explorer, you'd be coming in here and doing the C drive, GK data, coming into your BDP, and then which is the grower name, and then you'd be coming in here. This would be the farm name, but you see a PDF folder here. In that PDF folder, there we are going to look at the northeast quarter of Berlin 17. And I'll drop this down out of the way. And what I want you guys to see here is uh, when you open these up, you're going to notice that uh, whatever you're using for your viewer, these might look slightly different for the, the, the software that you're opening with. I'm using Adobe for the, the viewer in this scenario. Um, but what I want to point out to you guys is that the first map is going to be a map that looks something like this. It's going to have a FSA map in the background. Uh, uh, aerial photograph, if you will. We try to find aerial photographs that show a little bit about drainage on the field. Uh, this particular field doesn't have real major, major drainage issues, so it's not not as uh, as pronounced as some maps you'll see. Uh, next item I want to point out to you is that uh, um, we have a, a field boundary on here, and this is uh, your tillage boundary or a FSA boundary, uh, showing how many acres are being farmed on that particular field. Uh, just kind of confirming that we got the right piece of ground. Next map that you're going to see on there is basically the topography map. So you're going to see the elevation, the purple elevation, 904.3, going up to the, or going down to the minimum elevation of 899.3. So uh, showing you the elevation of the field. Also, you're going to see that we've also layered in some contour lines here. So you're down at the bottom here. Now you see your FSA data down at the bottom of the screen here. Also, you're seeing that it is uh, a six inch contours and that the rise and fall on there dropping by each one of these lines. The contour lines actually start at the lowest elevation and then go up by six inch increments all the way up to the maximum elevation. Other item of note that I want to point out to you is this is a 76.7 acres of tillage of tilled field and that the map that we're returning back to you is 87.2 acres. We do include and exclude portions of fields to make the uh, maps look and appear correct for you uh, so that we can see how our neighbor's water is impacting us and how our water is impacting our neighbors. So if this water would have flowed off across this field to the south, we would have included more acreage for the field to the south. If there was a big depression over here that was flowing into this ditch right here, and there's a lot of acreage coming in there, we may have included some of the acreage on this field to the north to show that also. Uh, just case in point, it's important that you understand that the acreage of the map may not represent what you actually requested. Uh, for better or for worse, uh, in most cases, for better, because we are, again, that is why we're including the extra acreage there so you can see more about it. Map number three here gets to be a map of just straight up topography map. Again, just cleaning it up so you're just straight topography nothing more about it same acreage as we saw before map number four is a flow accumulation main map basically these are showing you the flow main the main flow lines as for how water would leave your field so basically up here water would be flowing into here flowing into here coming out here and then outletting on this end of the field again with the red being the low and the purple being the high uh, again, this is starting generally, this will be starting on these, these main flows. It'll be starting somewhere around 1 to 1.2 acres. When you get into really large fields, you may see that it's starting out at even 2 or 3 acres on stuff when you get to really, really large fields. Uh, next, uh, next item here is going to be, you're going to see the minor flows or the standard flow lines. Uh, generally speaking, these are going to start out down at the bottom here at somewhere around 0 0.3 or 0 0.4. And on bigger fields, you may see these starting out at near a tenth, uh, one tenth of an acre of, of, uh, of flow and then going up to whatever the maximum flow is for these. And we'll talk more about this in one of the later, later slides here talking about uh, um, how the area is. But generally speaking, it's counting up as water comes from here to here from this high spot flowing into here, flowing into here. 
both these lines are coning up how many acres are leaving the leaving the field here. So the next map we have is the depressions main. Depressions main generally uh, for the minimum value in the depressions here is going to show you how much water is being held back. One of the things that's confusing on this particular map is that uh, the topography map in the background is from purple to red and the depressions are also from purple to red. Important items of note, there's a couple other maps in here that will help to isolate this out and make this make a little bit more sense. More importantly, what I want to point out to you, though, is that the depressions, because these have depression in Maine, we've trimmed out the stuff that starts at zero feet of depression. So we went down to 0 0.02, which is roughly one eighth of an inch of a depression going up to however the deepest spot is. In this case, we're roughly four tenths of a foot. So in this spot right here, we've got roughly four tenths of a foot of depression that we need to cut this open here or fill this in with dirt and then recut through there to get that to flow out that way. The uh, other item that I want to point out down here is that uh, this is a good, good time to point out that at the bottom of the screen down here, we are getting a uh, uh, area down there telling us that it is uh, 6.98, call it seven acres of depression in this uh, in this uh, uh, particular uh, particular field. The next map that we're going to get is going to be the full depression. So this will be starting at zero feet of depression, going all the way up to 3,900. So again, to four tenths. Point to be made here is that we went from the depressions main being seven acres of depression, and this one being 11 and a half acres of depression. So we picked up uh, we picked up. Uh, uh, five and a half acres of uh, of depression here, just in that area from zero to 200. So from zero to one eighth of an inch. So basically a teaspoon of water, we picked up five and a half acres of depression, which is crazy to think about, but what ha what you're seeing happen here is these all these, I, I like to call them popcorn here, all this popcorn that's developing along these areas that are fairly flat. These are areas that maybe you do want to come in with a scraper and maybe you are going to scrape down to these minor flows. All these minor flows are not in here necessarily for you to be cutting out to them. Again, the intention here is not to be dumping dirt in them and impeding the flow of, of the of surface water leaving the field here. But uh, um, like I said, this can be helpful. This might be spots down here where you would run out to some of these minor flows versus just hitting the major flows. The next map we have here, map number eight, is going to be one that is similar to the uh, map number six. But the point to be made here is the topography map has been put to the very back here. And we've layered in uh, the name. Uh, the aerial photo here has been layered in between and set some transparencies so that this purple of the topography map and the reds of the topography map no longer blend together with the depressions. The depressions now really stand out. And that's what the intent here is that, that it really helps you see depressions versus getting it confused with the topography map in the, in the background here. So that's really the only difference here from going back to this map right here. It just really cleans that up, makes this stuff stand out much better. Other item of note that I want to point out to you guys, you will always notice that the uh, depressions are laid over the top of the flow accumulation lines. The reason that we're doing this is that the, uh, the depressions, when it comes out of this black line right here, you're going to want to follow through and follow, do your ditching and stuff right to the bottom of the depression. You're going to want, want to ditch through the bottom of these, these depressions to these, these black lines. Uh, these black lines are mere guidance lines. Uh, they're the path of least resistance for water to leave the field. Uh, but one of the first parts we do is we actually fill these holes in. And to be aware that these flow lines don't necessarily fall right to the bottom of the, of the depression. So that is why you see us put the topography over the, or the depressions over the top of the, of the flow lines. So when you get to this point, don't follow this black line over here. Take that black line, follow to the bottom of that depression, to the bottom of there, to the bottom of there. And you want to scrape through and, and blow dirt through the, the bottoms of those uh, of those depressions. 
Other items of note, again, this is path of least resistance. You may want to take this and straighten this out and run this right straight to the road ditch. You may want to take this right straight this way. Um, back to the acreage being a little bit short, all too often you'll see us exclude out road ditches because LIDAR and RTK data in those road ditches is just not accurate. So we're going to rely on you to understand that that's there. It also affects the way that our depressions and or our uh, uh, watersheds and stuff are calculated. So it's important that we do exclude uh, some of your road ditches and stuff like that because the data may not be good. The next map you'll see on here, map number nine, is going to be your FSA map with just simply the depressions over the top, just showing you a different spatial view. So you can see that uh, map number 10 is going to be the FSA uh, uh, NAEP image aerial photo with the main flow patterns over the top of that. Again, just a nice reference. Some maps, this is going to be a more powerful story than others. But again, you see what's going on with that. Map number 11 is going to be that FSA map with the, uh, the flow patterns and then the depressions laid over the top of all your flow patterns. And again, just another spatial view for you to see your, 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 your aerial photo with that data laid over the top of that. Map number 12 is going to be the watersheds map. The watersheds uh, uh, and watersheds acreage map here um, so first and foremost, on the left-hand side, you're going to see that it's Watershed's unique ID. Each one of these colors is not in here. The colors, these colors don't necessarily, so unique ID of, of, of Watershed number four has 17 acres of water in it. So point to be made as you're, as you're looking at, as you're looking at these, you're going to see that, uh, that these don't necessarily line up perfectly. Other item of note is that uh, when, when you look at your watersheds down here, that this 85.3 doesn't line up with this 87.2 because some of these little minor watersheds across along the edges of the field are less than one acre. And we've deleted them out of the shape file here. So that's where the acreage is coming from is a shape file we laid over the top here. So it tells you that we got 16.7 acres here, 23 acres coming out of here, 19.4 acres coming out of here, and so on and so on. So. Don't don't get uh, don't get hung up on the on this this unique ID number. They're just unique identifiers to say that this is the the number of a watershed. So doesn't this this portion over here has nothing to do with acreage. So the last map that you have here is the uh, is the uh, uh, watersheds map. When you look into your SD drain stuff, you'll get a topo flow map that we saw earlier, and then here. This one, again, it's the watershed layer with the FSA uh, uh, aerial photo kind of laid in between as a transparency. And then you got the flows and the depressions and stuff over the top of it. And this is the map that I recommend most strongly for your background maps while you're, you're scraping out the fields. I really find this one helpful that it, it picks out that you can come in and know where to be doing my ditching know where to be doing my dumping my dirt. Uh, things that are going to help out here is when you got depressions that are up near the tops of these watersheds, these watershed breaks here are generally ridges. So this is going to be spots if you see depressions near ridges, they're going to be great places to be dumping dirt. Other items that would be good places to be dumping dirt is if you've got a depression like this one that's maybe doesn't have a lot of water flowing through it. Instead of doing a bunch of cutting here, maybe you want to dump some dirt in here to not do as much cutting. Uh, so if you see see uh, 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 depressions that are towards the beginning of the uh, of those minor flows, those are going to be good places to uh, good places to be dumping dirt also. So again, use these maps as you see fit. Hopefully you get an idea. Uh, but it shows you within this green area, all this water is coming to that outlet. This purple area, all that water is coming to that outlet. In this area, it comes all the way around up here, 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 and then to this outlet here. So, so that is the maps for your SD drain and the PDFs that you've seen that have been coming with all of your 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 drainage uh, drainage requests. Uh, in further videos, we'll be we we look at things of unpacking and loading stuff in uh, SD drain. Uh, but this is the the printouts and the things that you can do with your your maps. If you have any questions about any of the maps, touch base with the, your retailers, the people that you purchased your maps from. They will help you walk through uh, uh, any problems or questions you might have with your maps. 
Have a good day, and I wish you safe ditching out there.